It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box from Mr. Frank Smith out here in Manchester. Um, where, where were you last? You're always globe trotting. I can't, can't keep up to date with wherever you're at. Uh, where was I last? I was in Vegas. And I landed back Monday, came here Wednesday, here till Sunday, then a few days in London, then away again. It's a uh, no, it's b busy times, mate. Just explain to like a you know like a normal member of society who just goes to the office Monday to Friday nine till five, catches the same bus or train. I used to catch the bus every day to the office for three years, every day, every morning, and walk up the hill. I don't, anyone knows where our office is called Dark Lane, scary road to walk up and down in the. Match you make you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, used to get the bus every day to work. Uh, the tube's not that close to that either, is it? Uh, I used to get a bus from Romford, Chadwell Heath to Romford, Romford into Brentwood. Oh, not yet, Baz. Well, we got some, actually, we got some big news. Wait, go on, what you were saying, just explain to... All right, okay, so uh, Barry Smith, who trains... No, you were saying, just explain. When I, you say, I said about getting Oh, the bus. yeah, we're going to finish his question. I thought, I thought he was diverting, but yeah, just... Just basically, uh, for a normal member of the public who's just going work Monday to Friday, you're basically, I don't want to use the word jet setting because you're obviously you're working, but you're, you're traveling on flights and train, basically you all love the shop with different time zones. Uh, how does that affect your personal life and just like, just like, do you enjoy it or do you just think, you know, fuck it, I'd rather just go to the office every day? Do you know what? I probably, for a few years of my life, I didn't enjoy it because it was just relentless. And it looks hard work, it's real hard work. This business is like nothing else. But I, I appreciate now a lot more the things I get to do that maybe I didn't, you know. But the, the travel's hard work. I've done 40 flights already this year and we're only just in the beginning of April, you know. So the travel is hard work, it's hard graft, but I would never moan about it because it's a choice as well at the end of the day. Um, but it's sometimes when you're in an on and off planes getting not enough sleep it's uh, it can be tough but i don't like to complain about it and it, a lot like i say a lot more grateful now about the things i get to see and do which is you know something i wish i did earlier in my life i just remembered i saw your insta the other day you were on, on a virgin first class seat and i know virgin first class seats aren't that great because they're really narrow aren't they and i'm sure you've trialed out all of them which which one's your favorite i love the likes of qatar airways the uh <laughs> Saudi the other day was actually very good. Uh, who else? Uh, Etihad was very good. The airline, the Japanese airlines as well, were, were great. It's like an airline review. This is BA. I'm not sure about. No, you can't BA. put the armrests up in economy on them. All their planes are a bit old as well. They need some new planes. It depends actually. If it's a new plane, whoever it's with, it's all right. It's the old planes, not the best. I just thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Um, uh, your artwork on the posters, I was saying this to Eddie the other week, the Teddy Harper, uh, Sandy Ryan poster was absolutely amazing. And this week, I think they just keep raising the levels. That Zelfa Barrett poster's nuts and that one behind you, I don't like, it looks like they're in New York or something. Yeah, tremendous. Tremendous. Uh, to be fair, Adam and Maria do an unbelievable job with that. It's actually, being a creative is hard because you have to come up with new ideas constantly. And we're doing 40 shows a year nearly. It's, uh, it's hard work. So, yeah, they do an amazing job. So, well done to them. Yeah, I can appreciate it because that's what Boxing King Media, that's what we do with Trans Strive and Creativity. So, let's talk about this fight. Zelfa Bar and um, Jordan Gill, who is the favourite in this fight, in your opinion? I think they're both coming off the back of, you know, look, they've got, I think this is a huge opportunity for both of them. Jordan's coming off the back of a tremendous win against Michael Conlon. You know, many people wrote him off there, going to Belfast, you know, didn't give him a chance of getting that win. He went there and he, what a finish, you know, that night. But Zelfer as well, you know, deserves a lot of credit. You know, he took that Rakimov fight late notice, put up a, a great performance against him, didn't get the win, but, you know, he showed, I think he gained a lot of fans that night. So I think they're both coming in with their strengths. I think, you know, Jordan will be high off the back of that win against Michael Conlon. Um, and there may be at different stages of their career as well, where, you know, Jordan, six years ago, when he had that loss in Peterborough, who would have thought he'd be in the position he's in now? You know, so uh, I think it's a great fight. And I think it's the kind of fight we need to make more of. Fights where you don't know. Like, this is a 50-50 fight, in my opinion, not just because we promote them both, but it could go either way. 
what, what kind of numbers are you expect in the arena? Because obviously both great fighters, but to the wider audience, they probably don't generate the numbers and the eyes as like you know some of your big names might do. So how difficult is it for you guys to like stage something like this at the MEN? Then you know you could probably put it at a potentially small arena. Yeah, we could have done, and we get a lot of things about that. You know, about should have gone because it's a great main event, and more of the comments we got to start with about the venue itself. And it's like if there was a venue that held a smaller number of people, we would obviously do that. But there's just a lack of venues around the country. Boxing's tough as well because it's very last minute, you know, in comparison to other events that take place. You know, you've got music events, you've got comedy that's booked years in advance. We come in 10 weeks before. So we always struggle a bit with that. Um, but yeah, I do love people's views on the venue. We obviously set it up for a certain amount. Uh, but yeah, we would love if there was a venue that held 5,000 for this fight, we'd be there. Now we actually looked at Peterborough, for example, it was a great venue. We did a show there with Jordan many years back. It's closed now, and I think that would have held about 5,000. I think it would have been perfect for this event. Um, but it is what it is. Ellie Scott Neal, who fights for a unified uh, uh, potential oppor uh, opportunity to become a unified champion. Um, again, you know, I was looking at their feedback and comments what fans are saying about this potential fight and I saw some people the other day saying oh, it's not getting the limelight that he deserves but obviously that's not your fault but how, how difficult is it because you know we live in a bloodthirsty sport where people are one demanding knockouts and all that kind of stuff but obviously you're just not going to get them in some fights. No I think you know people want entertainment in, in fights you know and I think you know one of the it's a bit like Richards and Hitchens you know, he, he boxed amazingly in that fight against uh, Zapeda and won nearly every round. But he didn't really get credit because it wasn't an enthralling performance, shall we say. But he boxed beautifully. He then went in against Lemos. Unbelievable fight. Showed so much heart in there in that fight. You know, not every fight, as you say, is going to be a, a bloodbath tear-up, as, as, you, as you said there. I think also personalities as well. Different personalities, I think, is... One of the things where not everyone's got that same confidence. Not everyone's going to approach things in the same way, um, you know. So, not every fight's going to get. That's the. Not every fight's going to get the same level of PR and backing and promotional support from third parties, and because there's so much going on, there's so many different events going on. There's so many fighters, um, and you know, it's, there's constant competition. So, I get it, and we will always strive to build fighters. But not every fighter is going to be at that same level from a promotional or PR aspect, is the, is the reality. And uh, with regards to Ellie, if, if she wins, you know, what is the kind of roadmap for her next? Undisputed or potentially Ebony Bridges or like, what, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think she's, got, she's fully focused on Saturday night because it's a real fight. The opponent's coming here to win. She's, she's not bringing her belt to get rid of her belt. She's coming here to win. She believes she can win. But Ellie's looked great in her last fight. I think it's a, it's a big night for her. And I think she's got a huge opportunity to, uh, to go and become a unified champion. And from there, looks to become undisputed. Rhiannon Dixon uh, is also on the quest to show that being a white collar fighter um, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, Fabio Wardley obviously showed that the other week. And she's got a white collar background. She's a pharmacist also. And uh, she's got an opportunity to become a world champion Saturday. 100% massive fight. Karen Carbajal, someone we saw Katie Taylor fight before. It's a real step up for her. It's a real fight. And you know, if she can win the belt on Saturday, there's a big fight potentially down the road against Caroline Dubois. That's a natural fight. You know, that's, that's something we're definitely looking at. Um, so yeah, it's a big opportunity for Rhiannon. And she's shown a lot of improvements, obviously training hard with Anthony Crawler. And yeah, massive opportunity for her to go in there and do the business. Jaron Ennis, uh, just complete side swipe of subjects. Uh, Jaron Ennis, how much of like a statement is that for Matchroom USA to get a name like that? That obviously, because we've seen over recent years, it's been difficult for you guys to kind of pull anyone away from that Al Heyman uh, circle of fighters. You know, you've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter from some of the fighters. You know, who, who basically just say that you know Eddie doesn't know what he's doing in the US, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of negative stuff. But how much of a statement was it to pull off this signing? Uh, yeah, no, it was. Uh, it's a. Massive signing, Jerron Ennis, everyone wanted his signature. And look, it was always going to take time. We've been in the US for, what, six years now? And I think people have now seen what we can do, what we can build and create. You know, massive nights for the sport. We've done that in the US, and we'll continue to do that. It's, uh, it was never going to be easy. We were never going to walk in, maybe we thought we would. We are never going to walk in and take over the game on day one. You know, and uh, I think people are, the hard work is paying off. 
you know, six years isn't a long time to set up a business and do the things we've done, do the events we've done. And yeah, I think this may be the, uh, you know, but actually look, look at the people we've worked with, Canelo Alvarez. We broke the attendance record in a US stadium with Canelo Alvarez against Billy Joe Saunders. We signed Devin Haney, you know, obviously he went off to go and win, certain, you know, belts he needed to go off and win, but we've, we've been involved in massive fights in the US. And, um, but yeah, I think Geron Ennis, this is huge news for us and a, a massive swing and I think you're going to see more of it. What's the plan with Jaron? Is he going to fight in that uh, mandatory f shot that he's got or is it going to be something else? Yeah, that's the but look, right now that's yeah, that's been ordered by the IVF, so that's what we're working towards. We want to get him back in Philadelphia, it's a natural place, you know, build a start there. You know, for someone who we were talking about earlier, he's, albeit not as big as he should be, you saw the fanfare and the, and the, and, sorry. Oh. oh, right. You saw everything around that, that, that announcement yesterday. The traction around it was huge. And I think that shows what he could be as well. Because even without the big, huge promotional sport that he hasn't really had, look at what he's built. Um, so, yeah, we're excited about what the future holds, and I think the opportunities are endless. When's the last time we went to Philly? It's a scary Actually, a place. A long time ago. I went there, we did a show there, I don't know, was it four or five years ago? I'm looking forward to getting back. Scary place. Is it? Yeah. Everywhere can be scary. <laughs> it's a scary place. Um, right, um, Barry, Barry Smith, should oh, we get Barry? Barry. Barry. Bring him in, yeah, Barry. We're working on something here for you. Yeah, so, right, there's, so, there's so, something big happening here. Yeah. So, for those who don't know, Bazir used to be an undefeated professional fighter, 36 and 0. Amateur? No, professional as well. 36 and 0. He had 100 amateur fights, he lost one. Um, but he didn't lose against a man called Big Johnny Fisher. And Baz <laughs> has been calling out a big fight against Johnny Fisher. And Misfits, Caller, if you're watching, Baz against Johnny Fisher. I have to say, Big John's the A-side. No, I have to say. But you're my manager. Yeah, I know, but I'm just honest. Wow, well, they're yeah, doing the job properly. Big John's the A-side, but I think this is, you know, Big John. I'm, his man, I'm managing Baz now. All right. Um, um, we'll do it for 10 grand. And, uh, yeah. Let's, ten, let's, there's not been any negotiation. Is this did I, did I miss ten, a zero? Ten, what are we 100, I think. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah. Listen, but he sells a lot of tickets, John. Well, yeah, he, can, he, can, he can go to the A side. Um, if he's up for it and you can make it happen, let's do it. How many tickets can you sell? Though? I'll sell a lot. A lot. A lot. I'll do a few. A lot. Nice, a lot. A lot. The, East End, the old East End have come out for Everyone's that. Everyone's coming out for that. The old East End of London. But, you know, we're two old men now. We've got to get in shape. So, if it makes sense, Frank. If it makes money, it makes sense. If you want to do it, let's get out. Let's, let's do it. Did you see on Misfits when they had them two really big guys fight? And that actually broke no, view I actually, numbers. I actually think Big John and Baz could be... Because uh, what was the fight in the amateurs like? It was a... It's just we 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 we, we fought yeah in the amateurs at your call yeah and um, it was a good fight but it lasted you know Johnny's a strong boy so it was a good fighter though Johnny he was a really good fighter it's not what you told me a bit ago no no he, he was a good fighter but I just had that I just got the left hook and I so yeah that one shot yeah I had that one shot to clean some of that but if he wants to do it let's do it with less some fun. Could you show us a shadow boxer left hook? No, I thought you were going to show, show your abs. Well, Not today. Show, 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 show your left hook to... So I, I can show you my hands. Yeah, look at those hands. <laughs> well, look, there you go. He's definitely got legs on it. He has, he has, he's oh, got two. Legs. Yeah. I'm an old man now, I'm 52 yeah. now. <laughs> Well, well, let's see if uh, Frank can make this because I think last time he was trying to get Connor, Ben, and Eubank done, and that never worked. Uh, maybe this could this could be the replacement. All right, cheers, mate. I reckon appreciate, it. Appreciate, I appreciate I reckon that. it was shut out the O2. This I've, heard that, I've heard that Lee Wiley's been watching seven thousand hours of tape of Big John Fisher in the amateurs. He has, yeah, yeah. he has. And he's ready. He knows. He knows the shot. I know what to for. do this time. There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens. I, I actually yeah. hope it happens. I want a percentage as well if it yeah, happens. Definitely. Uh, you can have two percent. I'll have two percent, and we'll be sweet. But Frank, a bit higher. Oh, that's sweet. I'll get on it. I'll do that today. I genuinely think that go. could happen if it happens. We made it happen here yeah. first. Uh, Frank, uh, anything else before I let you go? Uh, I'm sure there's lots, but I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. But but yeah, we'll st we'll stick to today's show, and I'll catch you Saturday night. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Good to see. You. Win gold now. IPMB is giving away 524 karat gold coins to our token holders worth over $2,000 each. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, great news. It's amazing. It's never been easier to own gold, so join the raffle now.